If you're a fan of the Nicolas Cage movie Mandy, you might want to check out Beyond the Black Rainbow. It's from the same director, Panos Cosmatos, and it is a film that shares some stylistic similarities. But is this strange premise and the styling of the movie worthy of your watch? Despite being under heavy sedation, Elena, a young woman being held captive, tries to make her way out of the Arborea Institute, a secluded, quasi-futuristic commune. This is a visually and thematically ambitious work of sci-fi horror that I imagine is going to be very polarizing, just like with Mandy. It's also a visual feast, utilizing mesmerizing and psychedelic cinematography that creates a somewhat hypnotic experience thanks to the surreal stylings that pay homage to 70s and 80s sci-fi and horror films, while also maintaining a very distinct identity. There are a ton of deliberate and slow camera movements that convey a mix of futuristic and retro settings, along with this eeriness that can be haunting. Also, though, at times, boring. I was intrigued, and I liked a lot of the colors and the lighting that were used, taking advantage of these neon hues and really deep shadows. And even though there are a lot of soft-focused, dreamlike shots that can be immersive, these also become a crutch to replace some of the needed dialogue and exposition to build the story and then carry its momentum. It sometimes run the risk of being overly artsy and more style over substance, but Cosmetos does work to find a balance that is consistent with what seems to be his personal style. I not only think about Mandy, but then the episode of Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities that he directed. It had a very specific vibe to it that's very similar to both Mandy and this movie. There's also one scene in particular within a car where we witness a character flash a deranged smile directly at the camera. Now, it's not an identical shot to the iconic one in Mandy, but it is close enough. Now, I mentioned how this pays homage to some 70s and 80s horrors and sci-fi films. I just recently watched David Cronenberg's Shivers from 1975, and there are even some similarities that are present between the two films, especially in the pacing, the tone, camera movements, and lack of dialogue. But even with those similarities, this still manages to feel unique, blending the sci-fi and horror genres to really create something original. And I do like how this explores intriguing themes related to control, conformity, even the human psyche. The story dives into the idea of mind control by showcasing what happens when an experiment goes wonky, as well as addressing manipulation and the loss of individuality. This is sometimes subtle, other times it's very overt, which both is probably going to lead to some very head-scratching and pondering moments after the credits roll. Now, the story, it also excels at creating moments of genuine unease, like when we're shown Dr. Arborea's manipulative therapy sessions and then Elena's psychedelic journey through the Arborea Institute. These are haunting and they're creepy, especially when Elena's in this trance-like state. She's not fully aware of her surroundings or her dangers, but also still able to process some thoughts and make decisions that can help her escape. I loved how much the score enhanced the experience of the movie. I'm not sure if it made me like the movie more or hate it more, but it's an impactful element. The score, it's atmospheric and haunting with this synth-driven melody. And it also works to enhance the sense of dread and disorientation that just permeates the entire narrative, matching the sounds with the film's visual aesthetics. I mean, you can certainly just vibe within the score. But if you're watching the screen also while maybe enjoying a little herbal refreshment, it could make for some very odd or even a messed up adventure. And for the characters, there aren't very many that enter into the story. We got Elena, who's our patient. I mean, if you can call her that, since she doesn't really want to be there. It's also Dr. Aboria, the Institute's founder. Now, he's not in this as much because we get a more chilling and enigmatic character in Dr. Nile. He's intense and unhinged, but he also carries the ominous presence very well. Unfortunately, though, all of our characters are just dreadfully underdeveloped. Now, part of that does add to the mystique of the story, it also prevents any emotional connection. And that's especially important with Elena. I mean, she's the one that we're meant to root for, and we can be somewhat sympathetic to her just simply because of the circumstance that she's in. But because she is such a stranger to us, it's difficult to understand her emotional journey. This is also exacerbated by the dreamlike and surreal atmosphere that surrounds the entire thing. Everything is flowy and kind of like a drug trip, but as we float around like the characters, we never really grasp onto who they are at their cores. Now, for as intense as Dr. Nile can be, there was one moment that absolutely made me laugh out loud. Now, I don't know if this scene was intentional, but at one point, Dr. Nile is speaking to an associate and he says, I don't know, Margot. But he says it like, I don't know, Margot. <laughs> 
just have the exact same inflection and the tone that it said in Christmas Vacation. Whether or not that's actually a nod, I took it as a clever Easter egg within this very strange trip of a movie. Now, as far as the pacing for this goes, while it is deliberate in the meandering structure of their storytelling, because it's often very slow moving, the narrative, it also can just begin to test your patience. I mean, it's prioritizing the atmosphere over the plot, and that then borders on tedium. And this, it's not helped in any way by the meaning within the film, or even lack of meaning. So much of what we see in here, it's vague not presenting anything clear-cut or straightforward, instead just opting for that abstract and obscure. Now, I appreciate that it doesn't spoon-feed us and that it can be a source of discussion after watching, but sometimes telling an overly ambiguous story can be more of a detractor than a positive. I appreciate that the film relies way more on practical effects than on CGI. I mean, it gives a very tangible feeling to what we watch, even if it's being confusing and abstract. I know that this is not going to be for everyone, or maybe even most, but where the film lacks in direct storytelling, it excels in providing evocative imagery and an immersive, if not very strange, visual approach. If you are looking for something that's different from just a lot of the content out there, this one is certainly going to fit that bill. So overall, Beyond the Black Rainbow succeeds as it focuses on surreal aesthetics, awesome cinematography, and a hypnotic and immersive score but it falters when it comes to character development, vague meanings, and a wearisome pace. If you love movies that lean heavily into the artsy arena, definitely give this one a shot. It's beautifully crafted and even daring within its presentation with the emphasis on visuals more than plot and dialogue. But that could also be the very reason to stay away from this. There's not really any sex, and while there isn't physical nudity, there are some graphic illustrations that are shown in great detail. There's also a lot of profanity and some very brutal violence. I give Beyond the Black Rainbow two and a half out of five couches. Now, I watched this on Prime in the U.S., and even though it was quite the experience, I don't think I'm going to ever really watch it again. So what's an artsy film that you have seen that created a very strong reaction in you? You could love it or hate it. Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.